It's a little bit like Warner Bros. version of Into the Spider-Verse. You gotta win this game. Let's end this. You got you, Kron? And get our son back. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and Space Jam A New Legacy is actually not that bad. It was directed by Malcolm D. Lee and it's coming out this week in movie theaters and also directly on HBO Max where it's available, which I think is only in the United States. It has been 25 years since the original Space Jam in which Michael Jordan teamed up with Bugs Bunny to face off some weird cartoon aliens in a game of basketball. I actually watched it in a movie theater as a kid and I assumed that I must have had a great time. But it was only a few days ago that I finally revisited it and yeah, it's okay. I think its most redeeming qualities are actually the small supporting roles by Bill Murray and Wayne Knight. The sequel has no Bill Murray, no Wayne Knight and of course also no Michael Jordan. But who better to step in than this generation's greatest basketball player? Now it's LeBron James who teams up with Bugs Bunny to face off, not aliens, but a megalomaniac algorithm in a game of basketball. To be honest, I had really no expectations, but I'm happy to say that Space Jam and New Legacy is a somewhat entertaining family movie with some truly great animation, some good jokes and a nice message. As suspected, it plays very much like the first movie in many regards, but it's also fresh enough to spin the pretty ludicrous concept a bit around and adapt it for our times. All in all, I would even say that it's the overall slightly better movie. One reason is that it actually has more of an emotional framework, as it tells a father-son story. It's a very basic one and it all plays out as you expect, but it at least gives some more emotional depth to the movie. And I think LeBron James, who is of course no professional actor, gives a decent enough performance and he has good chemistry with Cedric Joe, who plays his son Dom. Another reason is that the different story beats are actually quite fun. The idea with this out of control algorithm combined with all the various IPs that Warner Brother owns opens up some nice places to go. First of all, Don Cheadle is pretty funny as L G Rhythm. And secondly, Space Jam and New Legacy is pretty much Warner Brother's own little Spider-Verse. Only that instead of all the different Spider-Man worlds and versions, this one has all the different Warner Brothers properties. In a similar fashion like the Lego movies, only way more blatant and also less funny, we are hopping through several worlds in the middle part of the movie. And I don't want to spoil them, because most of them are pretty neat. The overall ratio of jokes that land and jokes that don't is pretty 50-50, so expect quite a few to fall completely flat, but there are also some good ones in there. And one shouldn't forget that it's of course mainly aimed at a younger audience. At the same time, some of the jokes and references are just so old and stale. I mean, we really don't need a MC Hammer reference in 2021. And satirizing stuff from the Matrix feels pretty outdated as well, but at least they are still able to make it somewhat fresh in some instances. I also understand if people are more disgusted than entertained by this whole corporate self-congratulation, especially combined with all the blatant product placements. But I think if a property is able to use it and have some fun with it, it is Looney Tunes. And I also think the Nike joke slash product placement is pretty hilarious. This whole journey through different worlds is the movie's version of bringing the band back together. And even if it's just the tiniest of emotional arcs, but it at least gives Bugs Bunny some kind of own story, which is something I can't really say for the original Space Jam. And the third reason why I think it's the better movie is its presentation. The combination of live action and animation was of course a major highlight of the first one as well. But even back then it was certainly no Who Framed Roger Rabbit. This one not only combines live action with traditional 2D animation, it also throws 3D computer animation in the mix and it also transforms LeBron James himself into a cartoon character for some parts. Again, in a slightly similar Spider-Verse way, it plays around with different styles. And I can't deny that I had a smile on my face through most of the movie's runtime. Now, unfortunately, I think the weakest part is actually the actual basketball game. Not only is the movie overstaying its welcome with its almost two hour runtime, which is half an hour longer than the original, but I thought the whole setting and presentation of that game is just ugly and exhausting to look at. It doesn't take place in a real basketball court and that's fine, I did enjoy this whole video game angle quite a bit. Instead, it is this digital court with thousands of different characters standing around it. Some of them are just normal human beings, but the vast majority stem from all kinds of different Warner Brothers properties. Now, I have two major problems with it. 
First, it's just so much clutter all the time. You are constantly distracted by all the stuff that's happening in the background. And aside from one moment in the finale when things are calming down for an emotional moment, these characters are always in the middle of cheering and celebrating and it doesn't seem to really fit all the time. It's just this constant background noise and I thought less would be so much more in this case. Now secondly, something that makes it even worse is that these characters resemble popular Warner Brothers characters. But most of them are also clearly not the real thing. Up until that point the movie did a nice job in blending the Looney Tunes and LeBron James with beloved franchises and movies. But during the whole last act it looks like the same dozens of cosplayers are maniacally watching the game. Some of them look really bad. They wouldn't at a convention, but in a movie like this it's very off-putting, at least to me. I was really kind of relieved about the halftime break, when I didn't have to look at all this clutter. And also there's easily the greatest joke to be found in that halftime break. In the end the movie's positive elements outshine its negative. And I had an alright time. It's no game changer or anything super clever, but it's a good family entertainer and has some quality animation. So I can't be too strict and in German I'd say. Space Jam A New Legacy is Warner Brothers Spider-Verse. Es spielt zwar definitiv nicht in der gleichen Liga, hat aber durchaus ein paar nette Ideen, tolle Animationen und vereinzelt auch echt gute Gags. I give Space Jam A New Legacy just about 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.5, but I don't do that. Wow. Welcome to the Space Jam. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Space Jam and New Legacy. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.